Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Darrell from The Quest in Galesburg, Illinois. We're so glad to have you joining us for a moment in the Word today. And uh, first of all, let me just remind everybody, I think I don't have to tell you, it is Thanksgiving. And I don't care what the government, your state, whoever is trying to impose on you, God is still worthy of our thanks and our praise. So make sure we give Him our praise this week. And you do you, and you let us do us, and we'll all get along together. We need to quit trying to snoop on one another, boss one another, and living in fear. I'm not saying to avoid everything altogether, but at the same time, just take care of yourselves and be thankful for the health, the provision that God has for you. Uh, let me just again say this morning before we start that uh, we at the Quest, we're planning a new church. We're uh, targeting a, a an official launch date to go into a building. We're looking at property right now, but I'm just going to say it. We need your financial support. There are several of you who have been faithful already in supporting us, uh, not just locally, but people literally around the United States, several different locations that have been sending donations in, some that are regularly giving, and we would welcome that from you. If you want to donate, you can go to our website, www.thequest.life, thequest.life, no spaces, or you can use Cash App. I know our younger generation uses that a lot. Our uh, cash tag is dollar sign number four quest, dollars for quest. And uh, if you look on our Facebook page, there's ways to donate through Tithely or on the website, either one. If you want to mail a check, I've had people do that, you can contact me and we will accept those as well. Anyway, but more than financial support, and I mean it sincerely, we need your prayerful support. Uh, God has been fighting, or God is, the devil has been fighting us, and God is making a way. Last night, God spoke to a, a man I've never even met him personally. We spoke on the phone several times via Facebook, we spoke, and uh, last night as he was praying, God spoke to him and gave, him a, gave me a word through him, and it was so right on the mark in season with where we are, and I, I appreciate it because it just confirms what God is doing, what God has laid on our heart. Uh, if you need a place to support, I promise you, it's good soil. We're going to see good works done. We've already seen people saved. We've been able to help somebody with medications and other things of the, that nature. I'll, I'll go into that. We're sending out, beginning this month, monthly letters to people, letting them know where your dollars are going and what you're a part of. You have more questions about that, feel free to contact me. Uh, let me give my number again, 309-335-6480. Now let me get into the Word. God spoke a word to me a few days ago. Some of you who are my age and above, you remember this, we used to have glass soda bottles, glass milk bottles, and all, oftentimes we had a deposit on those things, anywhere from a nickel to 10 cents, and we could collect those things, those bottles, take them into the store, and we would get a return back. God spoke a word to me this week that I've entitled, No Deposit, No Return. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter, I want to read the first six verses. Let me just stop and uh, most of you know me that are watching, but many of you don't know me. Let, let me just tell you, my favorite place in all the world, and there's a lot of places I love, but my absolute favorite place is the beach. I've often joked and said, I don't know why God does, doesn't just give me a beach ministry because that's where I'm at my best. That's where I'm at peace. And honestly, that's where it seems like I hear God's voice more clearly than anywhere else. Well, anyway, a few years ago, it's been a number of years ago now, my family and I were on vacation and I was sitting out on the beach. And while I was sitting there and I was watching the waves roll in and listening to the sounds, I heard God speaking to me and he spoke from this verse, Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter. It was like God spoke so clearly to me at that moment, and I've never forgotten, and that's, that's been more than 10 years ago, about the investments we make in this life and the investments we make into the kingdom of God. And it's where I got my title from today, No Deposit, No Return. Now let me just share this scripture with you. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it, after many days, give a share to seven and also to eight, for you know not what evil shall be on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty on the earth. And if the tree falls toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall be. He who watches the wind shall not sow. 
He who pays attention to the clouds shall not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the Spirit, or as how the bones grow in a pregnant woman's womb, even so you do not know the works of God who makes all. In the morning sow your seed. In the evening do not withhold your hand. For you do not know what shall be blessed, either this or that, or whether they both shall be fruitful in the same way. Let me just pray for just a moment, and then I want to dig into the Word. Father, I thank you. I know it was you, Lord God, that laid this Word upon my heart. And Lord, I believe you knew exactly who would be hearing this, who needed to hear, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that your Word would not return void, Lord God, that they would begin to understand that without giving, there's no receiving. Without the investment, there's no return. Father, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk about these deposits. No deposit, no return. What kinds of deposits do we make? The first, I want to talk about laws of the deposit, if you will. <clears throat> Pardon me. The first law is simply this. If you don't send anything out, you can't expect anything to come in. It's what the scripture says, cast your bread upon the waters. I'm going to come back later on and explain that a little bit more and hopefully make that verse make more sense to you than it ever has before. But if you don't give anything, if you don't send out, if you don't invest, there is no return. Now, I'm going to say a few things that may sound harsh today, and I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just trying to wake you up to reality. God never rewards idleness. God never rewards those people who are doing nothing. God doesn't bless those who simply play it safe. God does not reward those who do not invest in their lives, or do not invest their money, and do not invest into the kingdom of God. Hear me. You have to step out. We have to take a risk. We have to cast our bread out. We have to invest something. We have to give something. And yes, this is talking about our finances, our well-being, but it is also talking about of our prayer life. It is talking about of our witnessing. If you don't throw something out, you're not going to get anything back. I've, I've pastored a long, long time now, and I've asked people over and over, how many of you have led somebody to Lord? And overwhelmingly, I would say 85 to 90% of the people would have to honestly say to me, they have never led anybody to Jesus Christ. That's sad. That is violation of the Word of God. That is not the way things are supposed to be. God doesn't bless you just for existing. God doesn't bless you just for going to church. God doesn't bless you until you begin to give. Give of your finances. Give of your time. Give of your talents. Give of your witness. Remember Peter, as he was walking, he and John were walking up to the temple, and the beggar asked for some alms, some money, and he said to him, said, I, I don't have silver and gold, but what I do have, I will give to you. He gave him the witness, the power of Jesus Christ. You may be sitting there saying, I don't have much to give, but you got a witness. you got a story of salvation of what God has done for you. And until you begin to give it, God's not going to bless you. God's not going to have a return in your life. God doesn't bless any of us just for taking up space. You've got to give. You have to. If you haven't thrown anything out, if you haven't cast your bread upon the waters, you're not, you have no right to expect anything coming back to you. God allows us, hear me, God allows us to be involved in this process of life. God allows us to be involved in kingdom expansion. See, that, that's our mission in life. Our mission is not just to make it to heaven, but it is we are to expand the kingdom of God on this earth. So many people... They, they want to have a garden. Let's get in the natural sense for a minute. People want to have a garden. I, I, I've been out, and I'll be honest, I'm one of the people I don't like messing with gardens. But I love beautiful gardens. I love seeing the flowers. I, I'll come see yours. But I'm not one of those people because I don't like what it takes to have a garden. Well, there's a lot of people like that. that They want a great garden, but they don't want to till the soil. They don't want to do the weeding. They don't want to plant the seeds, and they don't want to invest the cost of the seeds. Well, guess what? You're never going to have a garden until you're willing to do those things. 
people just wanted to show up. Well, spiritually speaking, there's a lot of people just waiting for the blessing to show up. And I'm here to tell you, according to God's word, it's not going to happen. See, you're not going to sit around idly and expect God to bless. Well, you might do it, but you're not going to have a return. No deposit, no return. God doesn't work in a no deposit system. You've got to do your part. You've got to give your part before you can expect God to give his part. Faith is not about playing it safe. Faith takes risk. Do you remember Peter? I preached on him some weeks ago now. Getting out of the boat and walking on the water. God's not about pulling people out of the boat. God just says, come. Whoever will come, will come. But you know what? God is not going to force you out of the boat. I've had people say to me, well, pastor, when God speaks to my heart and tells me to give, then I'll give. Well, I've got news for you. He's already told you. It's in his word. God never pulls people out of the boat. Moses, God says to him, what do you have in your hand? Until Moses was willing to give him what was in his hand and let him use it, the miracles never happened. Jesus told the disciples to take that little boy's lunch. It seemed impossible to stand in front of thousands of people and have one little bitty boy's lunch do something impactful. But when it was given, when it was blessed, God blessed them. And get this, not only was the 5,000 plus fed, but they gathered up 12 baskets. When you give, you get back. But you got to be involved. You got to do something. You got to invest something. But not just invest, hear me, here's law number two, you have to invest as much as possible. I've, like I said, I've pastored a long time, and I'm just going to say what I've learned through my experience. Most people are looking for the way to give as little as possible. What's the cheapest way they can get by? What can I do on a minimum? Excuse me, God bless it. Pardon me. Here's a wonderful teaching. The writer of Ecclesiastes, Solomon, says here, don't limit God to one place and one time. Now, where does he say that? I just read it to you. He said to scatter your seed, to give it some here and some there. Don't ever become a Sunday sower. See, most people, I'm going to just call you out. Most people only give in one location. They give to their local church, and they'll say, well, I give to my local church. That's all I need to do. Well, I want to tell you, according to the Word of God, that's not all you need to do. Your seed needs to be spread out because one place the crop's going to fail. In another place, it's going to flourish. That's why we expand our giving to reach different areas. Don't see your ministry as something that you do one day a week. Don't see your worship as something you do one day a week. See your life as a continual looking for opportunity where to invest, where to give, to give your witness, to give your time, to give your talents, and yes, to give your finances. Solomon gave us great instruction here, the secret of the ages. The more you invest, the more you make. Boy, that's pretty simple, isn't it? But it's profound. The more you invest, the more return you can expect. Invest your life in as many people as you can. I've had preachers tell me, well, I'm pouring my life into this person. Well, that sounds wonderful, but that's not what the Word told us. He said, Jesus said, go make disciples, plural. We need to pour our lives into many people, not just one or two people, but we need to pour our knowledge. We need to pour what God has given to us into other people. Invest your life in as many people as you can, and you will receive the results over the years. One of the things that is most fascinating to me is I've looked back over my life. I'm getting up there in years now, and I look back over the years of places I've been, and there are a number of, number of young men and some of them middle-aged men now that are pastors and I see the results that God is doing in them and you know what I've got an investment in that I've got a return coming from that I've got reward coming when I reach heaven and even in this life every teacher every minister every parent every friend make a lasting impression in their life third law of deposit is this don't Make the mistake of waiting for the, per excuse me, the perfect situation 
or the perfect circumstance before you give. Quit waiting for the right... People say this to me all the time. I'm going to get away from money for just a minute. One woman comes to mind. She told me over and over. The pastor said, I've been praying and I've listened to what you've taught about witnessing and, and I'm waiting for the perfect situation. And I remember saying to her, I almost said her name. I don't want to do that. I wouldn't embarrass her for anything. But I've said to her many times, you will never witness. You will never share your testimony as long as you keep waiting for that perfect situation. Because the situation is never perfect. See, if you want to plant a, a harvest, plant a crop, you got to clear the trees. You got to clear the rocks. You got to clear the weeds. You got to till the ground. There's so much work ahead of time, and we have to do that work. We're just waiting for somebody to walk up, waiting for us to say a word, and boom, they're saved. We think we've done something wonderful. But God's given us a job to do, to clear the field, to prepare the soil, spiritually speaking. Here's a wonderful piece of wisdom that Solomon gives us. It's found in verses 3 and verses 4. If you wait for everything to be perfect... Before you make a move, before you make an investment, you're never going to do anything. I've wrestled with where not to share this. There's going to be a few people going to know exactly who I'm talking about, but you already know the situation anyway. But I once pastored in a relatively small church, was going through hardship. The town had been devastated as far as the economy goes. It used to be an oil town, and the oil industry dried up and all the oil wells were down and so the church had declined people had moved away and we were struggling just to keep the doors of the church open but I remember a particular day we were doing some work at the church and it was myself and two other men and one of those men said to me he said pastor let me share my dream with you he said it is my goal to one day to give fifty thousand dollars cash to this church I honestly didn't know what to say. I didn't even respond. And he said, you think that's crazy, don't you? And he said, I've already got over 30000 of it saved. He said, one day, with God's help, I'm going to be able to give $50,000 cash to this church. What would it do? Well, again, I, I didn't say anything at that time. But here's the long and short of it. Less than a year later, that church closed its doors. They couldn't afford to bring another pastor in. We had left, another pastor came in, he couldn't afford to stay, and so he left, and they were without a pastor. Our state leadership decided to shut that place down, and I thought many times about John, who wanted to give $50,000 cash, had almost $35,000 cash sitting in the bank, waiting to give it, waiting for a perfect situation, a perfect circumstance. And let's be honest, he was waiting for everybody to say, oh, look what John did. And he never gave his money. The doors of the church closed. And his dream disappeared. Don't wait for the perfect situation. Had another situation in another church. One day a man who attended the church came in, asked if he could see me. We went in my office and he said, I don't know how to tithe. And I, I began explaining. He said, no, no, no. He said, I understand the principle of tithing. He said, but I, I just can't do it. He said, I have a construction business, and I don't know how much money is going to be in this week and how much is going to be in that week, so I can't release my finances. I he said, I can't give money. He said, what I'd like to do is donate my labor. He said, there's things I could do around the church, and I could send my crew in, and we can do labor free. And I told him, I said, that sounds wonderful. I said, but guess what? You ought to be doing that anyway. That's part of your giving and that's part of sowing seed into the kingdom I said but you're not excused from tithing he thought that was the most ridiculous thing and I'll be honest he left that day and I didn't see him back in the church for well over a year and a half he never did start giving he was waiting for an excuse waiting for a perfect way to give so it looked like he was giving but he was hoarding unto himself I guess everybody is guilty of saying one of these days or somewhere down the road I'm gonna be able to do this somebody who's making minimum wage somewhere one of these days I'm gonna be able to tithe listen if you don't learn how to tithe off ten dollars an hour you will never tithe off fifty dollars an hour it's just a fact Solomon said today 
This is the perfect situation to begin today. Fear and unbelief keep people from entering into the promises of God. Fear of what if I give and it doesn't come back. That's where faith comes in. You trust God to honor his word that he will do what he said he will do. Some people spend their entire life sitting on the wrong side of Jordan, waiting to go into the promised land, but they're waiting for a perfect situation. Guess what? When they went into the promised land, they had to fight their way in. Yes, it was a promise from God, but they had to go in, swords drawn, spears drawn back, bow and arrow ready. They had to fight to receive their promise. Well, a lot of people are going to stay on the other side of Jordan because they're not willing to take a risk. Listen to me. I would rather try and fail than fail by not trying. Somebody hear that today. Don't be afraid of trying because the greatest mistake you're ever making is not trying. There was an article I read, it's been a couple of years ago now, where the author of the article went into various nursing homes and retirement homes and he asked the senior citizens what was their biggest regret in life. And it would take too long to go into all of them, but let me just summarize it this way. The biggest thing he got was people saying something to this effect, I wish I had done more. I wish I'd tried more. I wish I'd taken more risk. They were saying, I didn't try. These verses in verses 5 and 6 of our 11th chapter mean that you will never know which investment is going to become the best return. So diversify your investments. That's good advice in the financial world, but it's good advice in the spiritual world as, as well. Diversify your giving. Spread it out. Give to more than one place because one place is going to be in a bad season while another is in a good season and you don't know which is which. A lot of people make this mistake. They see a ministry that is thriving and they run and they want to invest there. That is the worst mistake you will ever make being a Johnny come lately, find some places and sow your seed. Now let me get to the fourth law. The fourth law of deposit is this. You will find it. It's found in verse, I thought I wrote it down, I didn't. You will find it again in many days. Keep casting your bread upon the waters and you will find it again in many days. Here's what that's saying. When you invest today, don't expect results today. Don't expect expect your results to come immediately. Here's the greatest law of the harvest of giving that I could ever give to you. You may not see the results today. You may not see the results tomorrow. You may not even see them anytime this year or even next year. But if you invest your life, if you invest your witness, if you invest your finances into the kingdom of God, you will get returns. It may take time. You're going to receive blessings. You're going to receive the full blessing of God on your life. Don't ever consider an investment into the things of God as a waste. I had somebody actually say this to me just relatively recently, within the last three months, they were talking about how they had sown into a particular ministry and how things had gone bad and the ministry had to close down. And they said, I've wasted that money. And I'm like, no, you don't know what that investment has done. You don't know what souls have been reached and how people have been helped and blessed by that. So don't ever consider your investment a waste. You, make an, you may make an investment that is seemingly without return. But according to the Word of God, according to Ecclesiastes 11, it will come back again after many days. Sometimes you're going to find a reward and forget all about the investment that you made. It's such a blessing when you find out you made a difference in somebody's life and you didn't even realize it. This happened to me about a year or so ago. One evening I was sitting here in the house and uh, I got a message from somebody on Facebook, wasn't even a friend, but they sent me a message and asked if I remember them and I had to admit, no, I didn't. And they said, can I call you? I was a bit reluctant and they said, well, here's my phone number, you call me. So I called this person up. They said to me, said, I'm really sorry you don't remember me, but I had to tell you the difference you've made in my life. They shared with me that they were just a young girl 
in a church that I pastored many, many years before. And she said, I remember hearing you. And she said, sometimes I get mad at things you said. She said, but as I've grown up and I've matured and I've gotten married and I've got a family, she said, I'm involved in the church. I'm in the teaching ministry of the church. I work with the teenagers in, in, in the church and said, it is all because that you wasted your time with a filthy, forgotten girl with headlights. And I remembered her. But here's what my point is. I didn't think about her. When the times, I'll be honest, the times that I would go and pick her and she had another sister, I would go pick them up and take them to church and I would sometimes go by and take them special treats because they didn't have much. I had no idea, honestly, that I was investing in the kingdom. I didn't think about it that way. It's just what I do. But years later, many, many years later, over 20 years later, I find out that I've got a return. I've got a family that is serving God. And I have this investment in now she's teaching, which means I've got a part in what she's done. It's a blessing when you discover you made a difference in somebody's life that you've never known about. And here's what I want you to understand. You may have given your money, you may have given your time, your talent, your energy to something and thought it was a waste of time, but you don't know the return that is out there that you don't nothing about, but you're going to find out one day when you stand before God. I want to emphasize something again. I didn't re even remember her. I didn't know that it was really anything that I was doing. I was just sowing seed. I was just doing what God has called me to do. Let me say this to somebody this morning. I don't know who you are, where you are, but I know God's saying this. I hear this in my spirit so clear right now. Don't give up. Don't stop giving. Don't think you're wasting your time, your talent, your money. It's not yours to determine the outcome. Don't you give up. Because the next wave coming in just may have your blessing on it. Life sometimes is really hard. And sometimes it can get discouraging. Especially, Let me just be honest. I've done it. I've sown into ministries and I've seen it. It looked like I, there was nothing happening. But the Lord kept telling me to give. And it's taken years before all of a sudden I see the fruition and ministries explode. At times, let's be honest, at times, the more you try, the harder it gets. And the more you try, the less results you see. The more you give, you don't see it. And I've, I've heard so many people say it, and I'll be honest, I've said it myself, I'm just going to quit giving there because I don't see the results. Keep casting your bread upon the water. One day you're going to see the returns in your life. Today, we cast our bread upon the water. Let me take just a moment. I want to explain that passage of Scripture to you. As long as I've been a Christian, I didn't know this until within the last year or so. I was studying, and when I saw this, it made so much sense. It talked about the people of that culture. Most people, whenever they would raise a crop, whenever they would produce their product, they would sell it locally. But there was some who would take their grain, who would take their craft, and they would put it on a ship, and they would send it out onto the ocean. And it would go to China, or it would go to India, and it would go other places. A lot of people mock them because they've sent their crop out there. They've, they would say, you've wasted it. And this is what the writer Solomon was writing about. Keep casting your bread upon the water. Because one day... It's going to return again on the void. Here's what he was talking about. Those days they didn't have the airplanes and the cargo ships like we have today. And it took a much longer time. So they would make their investment. And it might be months or even a year later. That all of a sudden it would come back. Whereas they had sold their crop here locally. They might I'm going to use American dollars. They might have made $10. But they've sent it overseas and they've come back and they've made $100. Solomon's saying, keep casting your bread upon the waters. It may seem like you're wasting your time. He's not taking, talking about taking pieces of bread, throwing it on the water. It's what I always pictured. He's talking about invest in things you can't see. Invest in things that aren't here locally. 
Get involved in the kingdom work, not just in one local spot, but get involved in the kingdom work of what God is doing and watch how he will bless you and prosper you. See, it may seem futile. It may seem like you're sending your money and just throwing it out in the, into the air and letting it blow. But the writer Solomon says in verse 9, don't lose heart. I, I, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. In Galatians <laughs> chapter 6, verse 9, so we should not lose heart. We should not faint. We should not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we will reap if we do not faint. God's saying to somebody that God gave me this word for somebody to hear today. You keep on investing in the kingdom. If you're not investing in the kingdom, start investing in the kingdom. See, we're so quick about putting into our retirement accounts, and I'm not saying don't do that. It's important because the Bible says that a man who does not take care of his own family, provide for his family, is a fool. But we're also to provide spiritually. We need to sow seed into the kingdom work. If you're not investing in the kingdom work, start investing. Start in your local church. Start in a place. I'll, I said in the beginning of this, we would welcome your investment into the kingdom work that we are doing here in Galesburg. You may never set foot in Galesburg, Illinois, but you can have a part of the harvest of what God is doing. Make your life count. Make your giving count. Make your life count for God. Make it count for other people. Tell others about Jesus. I, again, I, I don't want to make this all about finances today. You need to sow your witness. You need to sow your story of what God is doing and has done in your life. By, because by sharing what God has done in your life, you're going to make a difference in somebody else's life. Give and it shall, not might be, could be, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will it be poured into your lap. Again, I want to say it. The problem is most of us think, I'm going to give today, I'm going to receive tomorrow. And if we don't, we think we've wasted our time. Keep casting your bread upon the water, and it shall return. The last part of that verse I just read says, as you give, that's how you're going to receive. As you sow seed, as you cast out, that's what you're going to get. If you're not giving, you're not going to receive. Again, money, time, talents, your witness. There's so many areas. But so many people don't give because we want to hoard it to ourselves. Give and it shall be given unto you. But if you don't give, Proverbs wrote about there's one who scatters but yet increases. He's talking about throwing out seed, but he gathers back and he said there's one who withholds and never receives ask yourself have i been giving to the kingdom have i been sowing into the god's kingdom work get involved today start giving somewhere again if you want to give here we would welcome it i will give you monthly reports of what god is doing but it doesn't have to be here this is not just about the quest today god's kingdom has suffered because God's people haven't been giving. I read something just a few days ago, and I believe that's where God began to speak to me. That since this COVID thing started, we know church attendance has fallen off. And I know many people have said that giving has actually increased in their churches. Praise God for that. But across the board, across the United States, churches are in decline. Churches are having to close their doors for the last time. Because giving has suffered so much. As you give, so shall you receive. Let me say it one more time. If you want to give here, look just beneath this. You'll find a way to give. Go to our website, www.thequest.life.com. Several people have missed that. Thequest.life. There's a link there. If you want to write a check, there's an address there. But if not here, so somewhere. Get involved in the kingdom work, and God will bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for those who have heard today. Lord, I don't believe you gave me this message just to stir finances for the quest. But Lord, God's people have been lacking in their giving. Lord, it's in the reports. It's not just Pastor D saying so. The churches are in decline. The churches are suffering. They're struggling. 
because God's people have been sold fear. And that fear has caused them to hoard to themselves rather than give out. Remind us, Lord God, that as we give, so shall we receive. Give and it shall be given unto us. Father, help us to be givers. Givers of our finances, givers of our time, givers of our talent, our witness. Help us to make a difference in somebody's life. And Lord, we give you the thanks and praise for all that you're going to do. Lord, I believe that we're... While we're in pressing times, trying times, I believe this could be the church's finest hour. Help the church to arise and make a difference in this world. And I give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. If you don't know this, I do a daily devotional online every day on my Facebook page. Come by and see me. I do it Monday through Saturday. Sundays I don't because I'm preaching, but I'd love to have you be a part of it. Leave me a comment. Let me know what God is doing in your life. God bless you. You have a wonderful day and have a great Thanksgiving.